Holyoke was a small publisher during the golden age of comics. As a comic book line, they officially didn't exist until 1943, but they were actually in business long before this. Holyoke was a printing house, and it was the family business owned by the Bowles family. They owned a regional newspaper syndicate, which means that they also owned their own printing presses. In the 1930s, they began printing Sunday comic sections for newspapers. As comic books became a thing, publishers came to them for printing services. In 1942, a few of their smaller clients were struggling. Holyoke owner Sherman Bowles took over these struggling lines. The situation and circumstances of these takeovers have been lost over the years, but altogether he took over three small lines which are now generally considered the Holyoke line. Holyoke, under their own banner, only published for a few years, and for some unknown reason, they also continued publishing under the name of the three companies they absorbed. From Continental Publishing, Holyoke got art director L.B. Cole. He left shortly after the takeover to start up his own independent art studio, but he retained Holyoke as a client. His cover work is highly sought after by collectors. Another artist they got from Helmet Publishing was Charles Chaz Quinlan. This guy was a workhorse who produced an amazing amount of quality interior artwork. Holyoke is also the first publisher to print the work of Joe Kubert and Carmine Infantino, both of whom later became editors at DC. They were also the first to publish Dan Barry, who would go on to do the Lone Ranger comic strip. In the world of comics, Holyoke didn't make a big splash, but there are a few characters worth mentioning. So now, let me introduce you to a few of their more interesting characters. Perhaps the biggest highlight of the Holyoke line, from a historical standpoint, is Jack Kirby's Solar Legion. Kirby did this series just before moving on to Timely Comics. The Solar Legion is an intergalactic police force led by lawman Adam Starr. Starr tangles with space pirates and grotesque alien kidnappers. This unfortunately short-run series only appeared in five issues of Crash Comics. The Hood makes this list for all the wrong reasons. This character was one of the most sloppily managed characters in the history of comics. His stories ran for a five-year period, and there was a near total lack of continuity to the character. His alter ego is FBI agent Craig Williams. Or is it Craig Reynolds? Or wait, no, it's Craig Wood. Or maybe it was even Tom Wood. Who knows? His powers were about as consistent as his alter ego. At least one thing was consistent, his costume. The only real positive to the hood is that he had a colorful cadre of villains that included Death's Head, Lady Satan, Firemaster, Red Lash, and Vulture's Claw. Holyoke had a number of female characters. The one dressed in head-to-toe black leather was Black Venus. The writer and artist who created her are unknown, but many of her later adventures were written and illustrated by Nina Albright. Mary Roche is a USO hostess and dancer, and when her dance card isn't full, she puts on a skin-tight black outfit and becomes Black Venus. Her story picks up when her boyfriend, pilot Bill Evans, is murdered by a Japanese secret agent. She's a skilled aviatrix and martial artist, and she uses these skills to get her revenge. One quick note about Black Venus. Black Venus should not be confused with an almost identical looking character, Black Angel, who appears in Hillman's Air Fighter comics. The Blue Beetle was the creation of Charles Nicholas. Originally, he was one of the top selling characters for Fox Features, but when Victor Fox was going through bankruptcy, the Blue Beetle was used as collateral to pay off his debt. Holyoke published the Blue Beetle for two years, and after Fox got out of bankruptcy, he had to take Holyoke to court to get the character back. During Holyoke's run, Chaz Quinlan drew many of the Blue Beetle's adventures. These stories are some of the best examples of the Blue Beetle during the Golden Age. Also during the Holyoke run, the Blue Beetle acquired a kid sidekick named Sparky. Altogether, Holyoke published 19 issues. Miss Victory was created by artist Chaz Quinlan and an unknown writer. She made her first appearance in the first issue of Captain Fearless. 
Secretary Joan Wayne balances her job in the Commerce Department with her hobby of beating up bad guys. Her Washington, D.C. backdrop is full of politicians needing rescue from dubious situations. No real origin was ever given for her. When Holyoke took over the Hellnet titles, they moved her into a prominent position in Captain Arrow comics. After she was established, many of her stories were written by Alberta Twos. In the 1980s, she was revived by AC Comics. They made her the leader of their all-girls superhero team, Femforce. Catman and Kitten were the creation of Erwin Housen and Chaz Quinlan. Housen was a freelancer who did a lot of work at DC and worked on many early Flash, Wonder Woman, and Justice Society stories. As for Catman, he made his first appearance in Crash Comics number 4. David Merriweather is raised by a tiger in Burma, and under the tiger's care, he gains the powers of a tiger. He is discovered and brought back to civilization. As an adult, he becomes a private investigator. When America joins World War II, he becomes a military intelligence officer. After a handful of adventures, Catman would be teamed up with a kid female sidekick named The Kitten. The Kitten is an 11-year-old girl named Katie Kahn. Her deceased parents were acrobats, and they were training her to be an acrobat as well. Under the care of her evil uncle, she is forced to help him commit various and sometimes violent crimes. Catman catches her, sends her uncle to jail, and manages to become her guardian. With her acrobatic skills, she joins Catman on his adventures. Together, they would go on to fight crime and thwart the evil plans of their arch nemesis, Dr. Macabre. Many issues of Catman comics are sought after by collectors for the wonderful covers by L.B. Cole. Also, Charles Quinlan did some of his most highly regarded artwork on this title. Due to the output of these two artists, Catman was the longest running and most prominent superhero in the Holyoke line. As World War II was ending, superheroes fell out of favor with the buying public. Holyoke responded by publishing a couple of horror and suspense titles, but like their heroes, they didn't make much of an impact. They closed up shop in 1948. With the exception of the Blue Beetle, their characters are all in public domain and various publishers use them to this day. Their new adventures continue on for future generations, and in the end, this may be Holyoke's ultimate contribution to comics. Well, that's about it for Holyoke. Please remember to hit the like button and make comments in the section down below. In case you were wondering, here's a list of all of Holyoke's superheroes. I believe all of these characters are in public domain. I know uh, quite a few of you are out there creating your own graphic novels and comic books, so here's some characters that are up for grabs.